Hello friends. In the last video, we have studied the ground nut decortication and shelling process. Now we'll start with the drying process. Drying is nothing but the removal of moisture of grains to predetermined level. Now this removal of moisture is carried out or drying is carried out to preserve its quality and nutritive value for the food and feed and its viability for the seeds. Now when we consider the removal of moisture there are two processes two different processes one it's a drying and second it's a dehydration drying it is been carried out or the removal of moisture is carried out to predetermined level while in the dehydration it is removal of moisture to very low levels usually to bone dry condition when we consider a moisture content of a substance it is expressed in the percentage there are two methods to express this moisture content one on wet basis and second on dry basis if we consider a moisture content on wet basis the formula for measuring it is m is equal to wm divided by wm plus wd into 100 here wm is nothing but a weight of a moisture wd is the weight of a bone dry material if we consider a moisture content on dry basis to measure out it we have the formula m is equal to wm divided by wd into 100 where the notations will remain same now there is a relationship between the dry basis moisture content and wet basis moisture content and this relationship can be shown by this particular formula that moisture content on dry basis in percent is equal to moisture content on wet basis in decimals divided by 1 minus moisture content on wet basis in decimal into 100 and one point has to be noted that the moisture content on dry basis is always higher than the wet basis moisture content based on the formulas which we have seen in the previous slides we can solve this example This is another example that you can solve using those formulas. Now, when we consider a grain drying, there are certain mode of heat transfer which carries out the drying process or heat transfer method. First, it's a conduction drying, second, convection drying, and third, it's radiation drying. In the conduction drying, when the heat is been transferred between two materials having same nature for example if the medium is same and when the heat transfer phenomenon is happening then that would be a conduction method in the convection drying there is change in medium for example when you are putting a water in the bowl and when you are heating a bowl the bowl will get heat and that heat will be transferred to the water so here the heat is been transferred from the solid medium to the liquid medium in this case this drying process is called as or this heating transfer method is called as a convection third is a radiation drying now it is based on the absorption of radiant energy for example the sun which transforms its heat energy that would be achieved by the grains and due to these radiant energy the drying process will be carried out Now we'll move towards the classification of grain, grain drying. There are two methods of grain drying. First, it's a thin layer method and second, deep bed drying. First, thin layer drying. Now when we are considering a thin layer of a grain, it has to be around 20 cm in thick. So in the thin layer drying, we have to keep the drying bed of size around 20 cm. Now all commercial flow dryers are designed on thin layer drying principle because it gives a constant drying conditions for example temperature and humidity. There are, these are certain features of thin layer method that it is limited to 20 cm grain depth, it is independent of air velocity. At a given relative humidity and moisture content, the drying rate is proportional to the difference between the dry bulb temperatures 
of air in equilibrium and with that of the grain. The rate of drying is proportional to the difference between the vapor pressure of a moisture in the grain and vapor pressure of the moisture in the drying air. Now deep bed drying. When we consider a deep bed drying, the layer has to be more than 20 cm in thickness. So we can say that it is the sum of several thin layers of a grains. When we consider the rate of moisture removal, it is always maximum for the bottom layer and it decreases exponentially for the subsequent layer when you goes up. The dry air becomes cooler and moisture as it moves up in the grain dry. Hence, I can say that the deep bed drying is not as that much effective as that of the thin layer drying. We'll see the example here in this picture that when you are preparing a deep bed for a drying method, we, we can classify this bed in three different layers. First will become a dried product, second will become a drying front and third, will, third one will become the undried product. Now for example in this picture when you are allowing the hot air to be incorporated inside the deep bed layer what will happen from the bottom where the perforated surface is present through that perforations the dry air will or the hot, hot air will go inside. Now the subsequent layer which has been connected to the perforated layer will get dry effectively. As soon as that air is moving upward, the moisture will be carried along with that, that air will become, become cool and that will not dry the second layer as that effectively as the first layer has been dried. So I can say that the process will, the process of drying is continue over there in that process and will not be effective. While the sum amount of moisture will be escaped that will be carried by that heated air again and it will move upward. As soon as it is moving upward, the upper layer will remain undried. So I can say that that will be an undried product. Hence, when the heat or the heated air is moving upward, the efficiency of the drying process gets decreased. Hence, it is not feasible to use the deep bed drying method. Sun drying it's a traditional method of drying which we are carrying out at every village places. It involves using the energy of the sun to remove the moisture from the product. These are certain advantages of sun drying that no fuel or mechanical energy is required. Operation is very simple, viability, germination, baking qualities are fully preserved. Microbial activity and insect pest infestation are reduced. No pollution, low capital requirement, operating costs are considerable. There are certain disadvantages of sun drying also. That uncontrolled and non uniform drying results in sun checks or cracks in the kernels, completely dependent on the, on the weather condition, not possible around the clock and around the year. Excessive losses occurs due to shattering birds, rodents, etc. It is usually 0.1 to 0.4 percent. Require specially constructed large drying floors. The entire process is unhygienic as we are keeping it in the air and open condition. Unsuitable for the handling large quantity of grain within a short period of time as it requires more space. Now mechanical dryers. In the mechanical dryers, we are having three main types: one sack dryer, second rotary dryers, which are batch or continuous, and third continuous flow dryers. First is a sack dryer. In the sack dryer, in this method, we have to construct an area, we have to construct a structure. In that particular structure, we have to give certain stands so that the sacks can be put over the over the stands at the another end of the room it will be having a blower connected along with the heater at its mouth so that when the blower blows an air the heater will heat that particular air and that heated air will enter inside the structure as soon as the uniform 
circulation of heated air is taking place inside the inside the structure the heat will be increased and as soon as the heat is increased it will dry the grains effectively now at the top of the structure we have to give the air outlet so whatever the moisture which is been removed that has to be escaped through that air outlet second is a batch or bean dryer now batch and a bean is nothing but a small capacity containers in these small capacity containers we have to put the grains in a bulk directly after putting a grains in the container in a bulk in a bulky manner we have to again install a blower at one end along with the heater so as soon as the heater heats the heats the air which is been blown by the blower that heated air will be circulated inside the structure or the container and will dry the grains this method is not as that effective as that of the sack drying method as the grains are been put in the bulk manner the normal air temperature recommended for the batch or bean drying is 45 to 50 degree centigrade while the recommended maximum depth of the paddy grain is 200 to 250 cm and the minimum air flow rate is 3 to 4 m3 per minute for the paddy